wondering how you can become better at running your business? Entrepreneurship can be stressful. There's too much to do and not enough time. If you're isolated in your daily decisions, have no fear. Success and balance are possible. Welcome to the Small Business Answer Man podcast, where you master the art of running a successful business using practical advice from experts who want to help you succeed. Now, here's your host, Gary Wilbers. We are so glad you came back this week to hear another great podcast. I tell you, this quarter, my goal in this third quarter was to find guests that can impact you and your business. And I think I found another guest that's going to help us do that. Because really, as business owners, we've got to be our best selves to be able to really get the best out of our people. So today with us is Mags, and she's going to share with us, what problem will you help our listeners solve? I, I would say probably one of the biggest issues that we have, Gary, is uh, that inner critic, that can can I do it? Or, oh, you know, they're so much better than me. And, you know, in this in in the industry I'm in, there's so many competitors. Oh, look at the market, it's really difficult. We get caught up into that negative thinking. Uh, and it's it's actually one of the best things that I've ever done is ignoring what everyone else says. By all means, say yes, that's fine, but not taking it in themselves. So uh, me as an individual and those out there who are in business, we know how easy it is when things are a bit tough to then get caught into. And especially, you know, as we move into a, a point where Politically, things get a bit unstable at this time when governments are changing or not changing or what's happening. We can easily get fed into this is a difficult time, so I'll sit back. I would say this is your best time. Go forward. Ignore what your ego is trying to get you to do, which is nothing. And actually go forward with the, the most impactful ideas you think you've got and give it a go. Well, this is going to be an exciting conversation because Mags Bell is an international speaker. She is an author and an awareness expert who works with major influencers and leaders around the world to cut, polish, and reset their inner diamonds through leading me. Mags, it is great to have you on the podcast. Welcome. Thank you very much, Gary. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Well, I think the thing is, I think you really set it up well in that intro about what you were going to share with the listeners. And I think this is so important because I think people now, you know, it's middle of the year, they're either feeling good about things, but there's a lot of people that's feeling uneasy about things. And of course, as you mentioned, in the United States, we've got a political election going on this year. So that creates some of that challenge and angst, and especially for small business owners, what's going to happen? What's going to go? And you can't control that. So can you maybe share a story to help us get started? I know you've talked about leading me and we'll get into what that actually is, but I think a story might set it up well of how that has impacted someone, of how using leading me, someone's life, and really their leadership ultimately in their life. Uh, yeah, uh, which one will I choose? Mm -hmm. I think when it comes to, I think one of the one of the best ones is often we think in business, you know, we, we've done our planning, we know where we're going, we know what we're doing, things get in the way, we get a bit um, anxious about things because we don't know what's going to happen. Then the sort of plans disappear slightly uh, and then we're trying to bring them back. And I, I remember having... Uh, a client who, when she came and we were chatting about what her goals were and what she was wanting, she had this specific goal about working remotely in France and having this amazing life in France. She could speak very good French. She wouldn't say she was fluent. I would say she is. Um, so she had been and it was wonderful and this is what she wanted. And we sat down and uh, I, I I have a, a program called Decision Making Made Easy and we put her through that program and it's part of the Leading Me whole program. And all of a sudden, when she really dug deep into what her values were, 
she, one of her major values was connection. And she realized if she moved halfway around the world to France, she wouldn't have those connections. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah, she could work remotely. That that would that's easy enough for the work she was doing. But would she have that connection? And all of a sudden, plans change. And this is what plans are meant to do. They're not meant to be written in stone. I've got to do that. I've got to do this. And I think in one point in my life, I definitely had plans and goals that I rigidly stuck to. And where I was successful in some things, I held myself back, Gary, because I didn't allow situations to evolve. I would I would miss things that came in. And that was because my ego was really leading me rather than me mastering ego. So for this woman, she's she's actually now working remotely. They had an office, they and and she's in law. So she now works remotely. She is about to buy a property in New Zealand where she originally came from. So she still has connections there and she's been back there a few times. She's found an absolutely beautiful place to live, which feels good for her and the connections and everything else is falling into place. So I would say we have to be careful about the plans we make. Are they actually fitting our values, our purpose and our visions? And do you have a value, purpose and visions of your own? Or are they actually just the companies? Because they can be very, very different and they really should be aligned. Well, I think that's a great story to really set up what we want to talk about is someone with the leading in me. And I guess if you would, would you mind walking the audience through how does the leading me leader, leading me ladder of leadership really guide leaders to master their egos and where they want to go, as we talked about in that story? Yeah, sure. I think it is something that over time, I know my ego mastered me so much, especially when it's my young younger years. And it's been, for me, where it really started or where this journey of leading me started was when I gave myself depression. Um, and I, I didn't even realize it because I was working as many hours in the day because I thought I needed to. And this thing about working hard, Gary, is absolutely, um, I, I won't say the word bollocks, but um, uh, whether you guys will understand that or not, but BS. Um, so I, I held myself in a state of stress for such a long time, I ended up in depression. And when we look at the ladder of leadership, when we see this it, so if this isn't a ladder of up and down this is a ladder from side to side and it's not even going from one side to the other it's actually a ladder that moves from the sides inward so if you can imagine leading me being a column that runs through you and either side of you that's where we are either bigging it up or we are belittling and that's other people or ourselves so the bigging up is your ego situation is trying to control everything, judging everything. It's got to be the way I see it. We've got to do it the way I know best, right? That's bigging it up. And then there's the other side of this, which is belittling. And that's where you're blaming everybody else. You know, it, it, there's got to be a blame and also victim. You know, poor me. I can't believe this has happened to me. How could you do this to me? So this is belittling. This the the ego is running me at this point in time. And because we live in the law of polarity, if I'm one end of bigging it, I have to then be belittling. Yeah. So either way, it's a difficult place to be. As far as where that these are mental health issues. So if you look at the bigging it, if you go to the very, very worst of bigging it, and I keep myself in control, that is when we get to the stage of mania or we get so obsessive with things. When it comes to the belittling side, 
if I'm actually in victim mode and I hold myself in that mode for a long time, then that is depression. So I had I had been doing both of these. I'd been really bigging it up, trying to control everything, making sure it has to be done my way because I know best. But at the same time, I was down here, oh my God, have I done the right thing? Is that right? I'm not necessarily saying that to others, but it's what happens inside that really, you know, mars us up. And that's where my depression came from. And I have a couple of tools. So when I'm bigging it up, the tool I use is the three keys to eliminate your shite. And that gets me back into the middle ground. And when I'm belittling, it's the four hours release model that I use to get myself back in. And I use these models on myself as well as teaching these models to business owners and um, CEOs, et cetera, of this world. So when we master the ego, that's when we come into this middle ground of leading me. It's a wonderful place to be. When the ego is mastering us, it is not fun at all. And I've got an analogy for this, which is you're in the movie theater and you're in the movie you know, so imagine yourself, you you know, this massive screen is in front of you and you're in it and everything that's going on, you're, oh my God, I just got a fright of my life. <laughs> that's so funny. I am reacting to everything that's there. But then I hear a rustle of a packet and I come out of the movie and I realize that I've been so deep in the movie, two people have come in and sat in front of me. I didn't even see them come in. All right. But I'm out the movie now. I can see them. I can see the movie. I can see everything around. I can see my partner, Paul. He's fallen asleep. So that's going to be a really great conversation we have. Right. So I'm now moving in and out. Now I can choose. If I'm out the movie, I can choose my reactions. But when I'm in them, I don't get to choose. Right. So the ego is managing me when I'm in. So you can imagine you're at either side of that ladder of leadership when you're in the movie. But if you come out of the movie, you are now in that middle ground of leading me. Now I'm able to take my time. Now I'm able to look at this. And what I'm, I'm trying to get business leaders, leaders of any sort to understand is when you master that, your life becomes so much easier. Yeah, you are so right. I, I felt like you were explaining myself in my early career. Yeah. Because I was that person either, um, you know, belittling or, you know, um, being in that begging area side of that control and judgment. And I felt like I flipped back and forth to those depending on where I was. And the problem is, is when you're in that as a leader, you really can't accomplish much. You yeah. know, yeah. you don't get results through people. And a true leader, the whole goal of a leader is to get results through others. But it's all about you. And so I can see your model. I love your model, how you set that up. When we come back from this short break, we're going to get into a little bit about the four R's and what some strategies they can use, if that's okay, Mags. Yeah, that's no problem whatsoever. We've got a short commercial break. We'll be right back. And now back to the show. Well, as we was talking about before, we've kind of set it up of, you know, maybe you're in that challenge, if you're in that control, maybe that judgment area, or maybe you're that blame victim person, or maybe you're a combination of both of them. Like I told you myself, I was early in my career, and I, I will admit at times, I'll still go back there, yeah. um, but I've tried to really, it's a little more self-awareness now that I don't. But the challenge is, how do we get in that zone so we're truly leading people and stuff? And you talked about a couple ways that you can do it. And you talked about kind of that 4R release model. Would you mind sharing a little bit with that? Because I think that would help our audience see, you know, how can we silence that inner critic? And how can we really foster that confidence and authenticity that we want of ourselves to be the person that we are? Uh, yeah, I mean, you're spot on. I mean, I, I was I was the same and I still am the same. We are human beings. And right. I'm, I'm, I think part of my mission in this life, Gary, is to get us to stop saying things like we're going to leave the ego at the door. We can't. We're human beings. We have an ego. We can't leave it outside ourselves, right? So it's for me, it's much more, can we bring the centered ego in? 
And that's the leading me part. So can we actually get into that center ground? <clears throat> and one of the things that I do teach is the four hours release model. So I'll say that slowly because with my Scottish accent, mm -hmm. it's the four R's as in the letter R um, release model. So if you just imagine there is four R's that we go around and the first thing or the, the first R that we have to look at. So in the model, all of these R's, if you imagine, go round. So you start at one part and you go round all of them. So the, the first one we come to is recognition. So if we don't recognize, we cannot do a thing. OK, so we have to recognize first. Then we have to reward which is the second R. The next thing we have to do is rephrase into the positive. And then we, when we get to the rephrase part, we then have to repeat because we're human beings. So we usually have to repeat. So the model is first we have to recognize. So often we'll find ourselves in this negative mode of, oh my God, I'm not sure what to do. Um, oh, they're so much better than me. Or oh, I'm not good enough to be able to do this. Or the competition's out there too big for me. All of that sort of talk and limiting beliefs, right? Mm -hmm. So we can do this with both, you know, the inner critic work and also any limiting beliefs we have. For example, oh, the market's going to be too difficult. I, I, the one I love most for, for this one is, at Christmas and New Year, for small business, trust me, it's an absolutely fabulous time. I have had some amazing results through that downtime, we call it. But the problem with downtime is a lot of businesses are looking for things to do because it's like, I'm so used to being busy. What, what can I do? And all of a sudden, your product pops up and it happens to be in the right hands at the right time. Because most people have gone on holiday, but I don't. I do, but there's automated things happening in my business that's working for me through that holiday period. So I can easily fall into, well, there's no one around, so uh, there's no point in me doing anything, right? That is a limiting belief that will limit what I can do. So let's just take that one, for example. So I say, ah, well, you know, there's, what's the point of that? The, you know, the market's down, so I'll just take the break. That will limit my capacity. So if I recognize that that's going to do that, I can now make the changes. And the change I would then do, sorry, this, is I move into the reward center. So the first thing I get people to do on this is when you recognize the phrase or, or the word that you use against yourself. So for example, the market's slow, so nothing will happen is the first thing to do is you catch your inner critic, which fine, but I'll just call it the inner critic. Um, so you need, uh, you actually call it out. So I usually go, right, you can stop right there. Because I now want to play the game because the part that we get we the part we get wrong is we try to change to positive thinking positive thinking doesn't work and i know having had so much success people are going to go what are you talking about that's exactly what it is but positive thinking doesn't because if it did we would have exactly what we think positively about and I, i'd like the audience right now to think about a time you've thought positively but you didn't get what you thought positively over right so positive thinking doesn't work but positive feel does. So if we can understand this positive feel, we're already in a funk, right? When we are thinking negatively. So we're on a negative feel when we think negatively. We don't have to, we don't have to go there. I need to get myself out of that negative feel and the way to do it is to move into positive feel. So by calling it out, by calling it a name, I can then move into that point of, ha, I've caught you. Now I've moved into positive because I'm now playing a game. 
And more importantly, I move into the reward center. Right. And and right. I in this, when I'm teaching this, I talk about the three brains we have in our body, literally, not metaphorically. So right. we have to look at moving from the gut brain to the heart brain, and the heart brain's where that's where we have to go. This is the place that most people don't invest their time in. So we have to look at the reward. The reward center is where I'll say, congratulations, Mags, you just caught it. I'm still in a good mood, but I find my happy place as well. And Gary, if we think about our happy place, that's either something of sheer love, unconditional love. That can be birth of a baby. It, often people will say they just were overwhelmed with love at that point or something really funny. So I've I've got a, a funny, it's a Scottish program. It's on, it, the, the scene is on YouTube and it's two Scottish people in an elevator and it's voice activated. So you can just imagine what it's like, these two guys trying to get to floor 11. So if you do <laughs> want to see it, guys, uh, just put into YouTube, Scottish Elevator 11, hilarious. That makes me belly laugh. That's my happy place. And I can do that. I can go to that scene in the elevator like that. So you need something that you can get you there really quickly. But you have to shift that negative feel into a positive feel before you can rephrase. Then we rephrase into the positive. So to get myself from that reward, I move and say, that's not true because I'm still playing the game with it. That is not true. And then I'll go, for everybody else, it is true. But actually, I could take really good advantage of this moment and get my products into new hands that didn't even know I existed and these products existed. So actually, I just need a wee bit of planning around this so that I can take my break, but the work can be done for me. So I'll get this automated. So that's the way to actually use this model. Because we're human, I pop the repeat in because sometimes we have to do this model a couple of times to then embed it. In saying that, I've had people say, Max, how many times do I have to do it? And I've said, to be honest with you, if you get the first couple absolutely spot on and you do the prep work before it happens, so if it's I'm not good enough and I do the prep work of I know that's the phrase, I've heard me either say it in my head or say it out loud, I can then go, that's not true because I've now caught it. I know where my happy place is. I know the name I've given the inner critic. And I can then move myself through, what am I going to say differently? What, what, what can I back? You've got to believe the rephrase because if you don't, you'll go back to that negative feel. But without that positive feel, you're never... Many a time clients have come back and I've said, how, how's, how's the model going? And they've got, yeah. And I've got, no, it's not working then. And they'll go, no, 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 I, no, it's be no, it's not working. Every single time when we've gone into it, they've just not put enough into the reward part. So you really have to get yourself into that reward center, that feel of positivity before you can rephrase it and believe it. Yeah, and I would see how you have to go through it multiple times because the thing is, is we're changing a behavior. We're changing Correct. a thought pattern. Yep. And to change that, you can't change things overnight. And I think it really comes back to what we're talking about in leadership is, you know, better leaders become more self-aware and yeah. they're willing to go through the work that they need to go through. And I get business owners all the time saying, you know, they're, they always kind of go to that back to your, you know, blame victim or they'll put their self in that control judgment side. And it's always something else. And instead yeah. of looking at themselves and, you know, the thing is, is we're going to have to change as leaders of how we approach things and how we do things. So first, that leader has to change. I always tell people when I'm out speaking, Mags, I'll ask them, how many people in this room is a leader if I'm speaking to the audience? And if I have 100 people there, they think right away about title. I'm not yeah, thinking yeah. title. <laughs> I'm thinking about them because I believe everyone's a leader. First, you're a leader of self. So we have to be willing to do that. And I see how your model of recognition, reward, rephrase, repeat sets it up to get them into a model of thinking that thinks differently. So 
some great information and work that you're doing. It's kind of exciting to hear about from this side of it. It's the first time I've heard about it, but it's just, you know, it's so true what people need because leaders have to lead today. And first, they've got to lead themselves. Yeah, I, and this is where leading me came from because this is all this is all work I had to do on myself, Gary. Yeah. This isn't, you know, this isn't. Oh, I put a lovely little model together and I'll give this to. No, no, no. This has been years and years in making because my ego was so out of balance, and I needed to manage that ego. And I now I I sat down one day and I thought, what is it I do? You know, I've been in leadership development for years. What is it I actually do? Do, do I develop leaders? And I realized that it, we, we've, we've got a misnomer over leadership and the fact that we are there to lead people on. In actual fact, people just follow. So if I don't know me, and, and I mean really know me <laughs> inside out, if I don't know where my feelings are, the, as Jung would say, the shadow side, you know, if I don't know that shadow side, if I don't make friends with that shadow side and understand that there's there's good and bad, what we perceive as good and bad in everyone, and also in ourselves, because it's quite fine to say, yes, they are, because that's the blame game. You know, So we're pointing out the way. But that pointing in and going, which parts of me to have I not wanted to look at? And I'll, I'll tell you, uh, when I take people through the three keys uh, to eliminate your shy, oh, my God, the... the, the aha moments we get from that of oh my god I've been hiding from that but I feel such a relief from being able to look at it because if I ask somebody to do something and they do something else the reason they're doing something else and I get annoyed because they are is because I'm the one as the leader who is doing it they're only following what I do so if I don't know myself well enough, that's when I blame them for not doing. But in actual fact, they are. They're just following you. So I, I think we've been on a similar journey. There'll be many people out there who recognize the same journey they've been on. Uh, so this isn't this isn't Mags Bell having wonderful new wee models. That she, no, this has been pain that Mags Bell has gone through to eventually go, how do I change what I'm doing? It's worked for me. It's worked for many, many people that, that I speak to and also that I, I work with. So it, they're, they're great to hang your hat on and try to look at the inward to yourself first before you actually help others to develop and grow, which is the job of a leader. Yeah. And why do they tell you an airplane? If you got young children, put your mask on first before you Correct. try to put on your child. It's the same concept, but it's a philosophy of you have to change yourself first if you're going to change your organization, especially small businesses, because that's yes. so reliant on that leader leading that company. And then they're going to get the best out of their people. Mags, this has been a great conversation. I think we could go on for another hour easily because <laughs> I'm interested in everything else. But let me give them your website. It's magsbell.com slash blog, or you can just do magsbell.com. There's some great information on there. Saw some of your articles. I looked at them. So check out that information. We'll have it all in show notes. You also talked about you're willing to give our listeners a kind of a call to action, something that maybe will help them if they would like to check it out. And we'll put that in uh show notes also. Uh, absolutely. So, uh, you know, I've just quickly talked about the four hours release model today, but there's actually a webinar that um, runs 24 seven. So anyone anywhere in the world can go and access this. Um, so I will actually give the link. You have to go in, register, get it. All of that is there free. So there's nothing, you're not paying for anything. It's yeah. it's free, but you will learn the model. You will learn about the three brains and how they actually link up. And you'll learn about the positive thinking not working, but that positive feel that does. So I'm happy to share that link with your audience today. And uh, yeah, and if, it, if it appeals to you and that inner critic keeps banging on at you, go and learn the model. Because if you learn the model, I'll guarantee you will silence the inner critic. 
Well, I appreciate you sharing that. And we'll have all that in show notes. That'll be available to you. Mags is also on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. We'll have all that in show notes available to them. And again, it's magsbell.com. Um, we'll have that in show notes. So if you want to check it out, please do. Before I let you go, Mags, I ask every guest the same question. What would be your best advice you would give the business owners? Ah, great question, Gary. Great question. I think it would have to be get out your own way. I think mm -hmm. that's that's the biggest take uh, in my life. Is I mean, my, I got in my own way way too much. And I mean by that, allow yourself to learn to manage your ego. Because once you come into that middle ground, get out your way, lots of things come to you. Lots of synchronicities happen. You get you get some of the best things because you open your mind up to asking questions rather than thinking you know it all and bigging it up. I would say get out your own way. What a great advice for business owners. So I hope you take that. I always share an action item. I think Mags really set it up. Get to know thyself. Do mm. you really know thyself? And it depends, you know, we say we learn more as we age, but you can do it at a younger age. There's so many tools, resources. She shared one with us to, with the four R's release model. Check out our webinar. She's going to give that to you for free. So there's some ways that you can really understand yourself. If you're being challenged in that area as a leader, this is the thing. Know the yourself before you can be a better leader. And I think that's really our whole conversation wrapped around is we become better leaders the more we know ourselves. So we can get out of our way because we understand our weak areas and the areas that are creating challenges for us. Mags, I appreciate you so much sharing your expertise with the audience. Thanks for being with us today. It's been an honor. And, um, you know, what the work you're doing out there, Gary, is so crucial. For small businesses, it, you know what it's like. We can end up doing things that are just so in the moment for us and not enough of this. So you you provide such a great service. Um, so I, I thank you on behalf of the audience for what you're doing too. So stay true, stay you, and keep bringing out your brilliance, Gary. Well, thank you very much for that. And listeners, I tell you, the thing I want you to do is share this with some other business owners because we have a tough job, you know, but we're employing a lot of people. But the better you make yourself, the better your business is going to be. And that becomes the key. We told you this quarter we was going to work on your business. Well, today we did work on your business yet, because if you become better, I guarantee you, your business will become better. And that's the real key to it. And that's how you'll grow and scale your business. And you'll even offer more opportunities for people to be able to get your great service or product or what it is in the marketplace. So thanks for joining us again today. We'll be back next week with another great guest. Like and share this podcast and let others know about it. I truly would appreciate it. Make it a great day. We'll see you next week. That's all the time we have for this week. To continue your journey, head over to smallbusinessanswerman.biz to access the tools and resources mentioned in today's show. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and share it with someone who would benefit from listening. That's smallbusinessanswerman.biz. Until next time, remember, when you find the right solutions, your business grows and you get your time back.